Hi there, I'm a highly centralised multi-site campus. I'm a number 10 on the scale. Here, we like to do everything exactly the same. Hi, I'm the other multi-site campus. I do exactly what he does. Dude, I'm like a highly decentralised multi-site campus. I'm a one on the scale. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> Uh, hello, hello. I am the other remote east side campus from him. Oh, I've just woken up, it's 10.30 a.m. Hi, I'm a number five on the scale. I have no idea what's going on. So, hi there, this is Chris from Thinking Church. Great to be back with you for another video. And uh, before we get into the subject today, why not hit a, uh, a thumbs up, a subscribe, and the bell icon, because when you hit the bell icon, it does the work for you. Um, which means that, you know, you get notified when the videos come in. Uh, so, uh, please do that. That's very uh, gratefully received. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, on to this week's topic. Um, today we are talking about how centralised should your multi-site model be? Okay, so uh, let's start at the decentralised end. And when you're decentralised, which is like at the one end of the scale, it means that there is a lot of local autonomy. So typically in these scenarios, each campus has responsibility for their own teaching, uh, so they'll often do. They might do their own series. Uh, they might um, they'll, they'll they'll run the teaching themselves. They won't have video teaching, which would be more a much more centralised approach. Um, they'll run their own finances. May even be their own in their own charity uh, status. So they're linked more relationally, the sites rather than uh, all one charity body. And then with that, there's uh, vision will be cast from the local level rather than from the central level. And uh, the advantage of that is that, that you are much more, uh, you're closer to the needs of the locality. So you know how what your people are like and what your people need. And, and that can be lost with a more centralised strategy with multi-site. And that locality, that, that sense of being able to understand what the people in that location mean, needs means that you can make more changes, uh, you can go off piste a little bit more, change the plan. Uh, I know a lot of decentralised multi-site churches even have to have things like their own discipleship pathway, even to that extreme, well, they they will they'll go to that level of changing things to mean that they are very, very... They're doing things very, very differently from one campus to the next. I think that you can go so far on that level where you actually, uh, especially when you're getting to that point where you're having different ministry strategies, I question whether you're actually a, in a multi-site model at that point and you're drifting then into a multi-church model, uh, especially if you're, you know, if you go to the point where they they have different names and uh, if you're trying to reach different target markets those kind of things i'd be better you'd be better to go down a multi-church model you can see my video on the difference between multi-site and multi-church models we've already got that uh, in and i'll try and put it there or wherever it goes uh, and so that will link into it and you can watch that um, but in a multi-site typically uh, you'll keep the same name, but on the decentralized end, there's a lot more local freedom. On the other end of the scale, on the really centralized end of the scale, this is where it's a lot more uniform in how things work. So typically the most centralized churches they'll have, uh, so the, the services are identical. Uh, so Sunday services will be absolutely identical. Same songs, uh, they'll have the same, the same preach that's done over video. Uh, they'll have uh, the hosting slots will be scripted, maybe delivered locally, but uh, they'll be scripted. Um, then uh, and it will just be exactly the same. And that even to the greatest extent, we've I've heard stories of uh, in sort of large multi-site, very centralized multi-site churches. They'll have uh, the music director will even be directing the music across campuses from one place. I mean, I don't even know how that's even possible, but it is possible. I'm, I'm sure, uh, and that they do that, and so it's centralised to that level. 
And there's clear advantages to this because it's just so much more efficient to set up. You can actually expand way faster because you're not having to rework through things. Everything's set up. It's a little bit more like, you know, setting up a Costa Coffee. So very simple to set up because you know exactly what to expect. You know what you're doing. It's going to be the same wherever you set it up. Of course, there are disadvantages to that. And, and that's... Wherever you set up, you have to know that it's going to work in that scenario. Um, but the one thing that will be overseen, overlooked is the, uh, the need for the local inputs and the local ways of expressing things and uh, even thinking about some kind of more localized strategies, maybe in the community or gathering volunteers. So what's, where, how centralized should you be? Well, it's up to you. There's advantages and disadvantages to both approaches. I think that there's great advantages from a decentralized point of view because of just that ability to be really close to the ground, be localized. Uh, I also think there's great advantages to being centralized. You can do things with so much more efficiency. I think that that's the worry about um, it feeling too corporate, I think that that's not as much of a worry as people make out it to be. I think it's more of a caricature. So I think there's great advantages to either. The main thing is, is what you decide. And where, whichever you decide, the big thing is to not go for, as we said at the, at the intro, don't go for a five where you're kind of both. You can't be both. You've got to be uh, one or the other. Even if you're sort of 5.1 or 4.9, you've got to be, you've got to sway one way or the other. So you've either got to lean more decentralized or more centralized on the scale. But I think before you start... Going down a multi-site route, you've got to work out how centralized you want to be because that's going to move yourself in that direction. Now, when if you decide to be slightly more centralized uh, or slightly more decentralized, you will always end up, if you think, oh, we'll be a 4.9, you're always going to end up more like a 2 on the scale. And if you think, oh, we'll be 5.1, you're more likely going to end up being a, a 7 or an 8 on the scale. And that's that's okay, and that's fine. In fact, you probably need to move towards the extremes to then work into the middle a bit more. However, it's I think it's harder with a decentralized model to go really decentralized and then to bring it more centralized. It's actually easier to, to, to start off being way more centralized and then decentralized as you go along. It's because it's... Uh, I've heard it said this way, it's easier to let go of the reins of a horse than to pull the reins. And when you pull the reins, there's always going to be, uh, you're going to meet resistance, you're going to meet problems, you're going to meet people who feel like they've got their, having their toes stood on and things are becoming more corporate and head office are doing this and central are doing that. So uh, if anything, if you're going to start down a more decentralized route, start actually weirdly more centralized than you'd like and move decentralized as you go along. Otherwise, if you go too decentralized, you'll end up needing to bring it in and that's a lot harder. So uh, there's some thoughts to think about when it comes to uh, multi-sites. You've got to work out how centralized you are. That is the biggest point when you're starting. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Uh, if you think it's been helpful, then, you know, as I said at the top, give it a like, share, review, all those kind of things. And drop a comment. You know, if your church is a uh, multi-site church, I'd love to hear how you've been finding this and uh, what your plan is. How, what, where are you on the scale? I'd love to hear that. And uh, so drop a, a comment below and love to read that. That's all for today. Ciao for now.